astronomers, fellow astrophotographers. Uh, quick review on the ASI 224 MC because there's not much to say. It, it's small, it's relatively inexpensive, it does exactly what it's supposed to, it's wonderful. It is a great planetary camera. Um, it's a one-shot color. I've shot both infrared and visual spectrum with it, and it was lovely both times. I, on Jupiter, I'm on you know Jupiter was really bright. I was getting like a, almost a hundred frames per second with it. Um, it. It's great. I've gotten great results with it. Definitely worth the purchase if you're still using like a junky old webcam for planetary or something. The ASI 224MC is great. So get that. But I'm going to talk about how we are going to make a video of the rotation of Jupiter. Um, I, I had it set up last night, and I was capturing two-minute clips of video. And it was only 25 degrees over the horizon. Seeing was horrible. So my, my blue channel is like a nightmare. Um, but... You know the, the the quality isn't that great, so I'm just gonna make a video of it because it'll look cool. And I and I captured like two hours straight of back-to-back two-minute clips on Jupiter. So let's go ahead and go through how we will make a video of that. And it's it's really simple. Um, I use PixInsight. You can make a video with uh, Photoshop by loading all the frames as layers and then making an animation. So that's not terribly difficult. But uh, I will show you how I did it. The first thing we do is open an auto stacker. And now I saw this, I saw Chuck from Chuck's Astrophotography do this. So I'm going to try it. He just opened up all of his captures, all of his raw captures. And for some reason, it processed all of them, but there, there's no like batch processing mode. It just did it. <laughs> so if Chuck can do it, we'll see if it works for us. So we'll just hit open, open all of them. See, I don't see anything that shows that it has opened all of those files. I just see the one file name here. So I just noticed down here in the bottom corner, it says six of 50. So I th it's technically designed for batch processing I think okay let's just hope for the best uh, we will analyze we will let's see let's place a smaller AP grid place AP grid and now let's see um do you think 50 is too much let's these are, how many frames do we have in these stacks? 5,000 frames. Let's go with like the best 35%. And everything's good. Planet, gradient. Uh, okay, let's stack and see what happens. No, eat an apple, please. Those pears, those pears aren't ripe yet. Okay, so stacking just finished. Um, these were I had 52 minute exposures back to back on Jupiter. Now I know a lot of people still go into Registax to do this, but Registax has never. It's never worked for me. It's 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 full of bugs. It's crashing. It's not supported. It's outdated. Um, so I just do this in PixInsight. I do the all the rest of the steps in PixInsight. Uh, you can use Photoshop to do this if you are a Photoshop wizard. But. I'm going to open up Pixent site now and show you how we do this. Now I know I know it's tempting to be like, oh my god, 50 images, how are we going to process all these? But Pixent site has neat things called containers, image containers and process containers, and they make things really simple. 
to work on big batches of uh, files. So here are our 50 images. Now what we're going to do is figure out the processes that we want to do on all the images and then we'll build the image containers and process containers and then do the whole batch. So the first thing we do is multi-scale linear transform and this is how we will sharpen it up. Um, we just use the wavelet layers To sharpen it up and it's it's easy to get carried away here you don't want to do too much because then it'll start looking kind of goofy that's about as far as I want to go with it I mean it's even it's kind of pixelated down there that's uh, let's see if we can ease off on that a little bit man I don't know let's keep that layer right there up a little more there. And that's a little too much. Okay, and that's, you know, that's close enough. The the data is not good here because it's it was only 25 degrees off the horizon. I don't have an atmospheric dispersion corrector an ADC, so um, you know, you can see there's all kinds of color fringing. That is not great here. So I'm just going to make a little movie out of it, which will be cool. You know, it won't be a great image, but it'll be a neat movie. Uh, I think that's probably about as far as I want to push it. Okay, we'll call that good for the wavelet sharpening now what we do is grab this little arrow right here and drag it to our workspace and that is a copy of that exact set of processes so now you know if we just drag that onto an image it does it and it you know looks good so now what I want to do is uh, work on that color color fringing a little bit and that you'll go to geometry and channel match for that and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna raise my uh, red channel up like maybe a little more than a pixel we'll see how that looks there that that lines it up a little bit better it doesn't look so ridiculous see that looks bad and that that lines the channels up a little bit closer still not great but I mean if you could get really crazy with this and do deconvolution on it and stuff but I am not worried about it that much so that's good for lining up the channels we will create another process right there now that will line up the channels and um, let's see maybe a slight curves transformation to bring out some contrast that looks pretty good okay so this is this is our stack so these are our, and these are our processes we will apply to them well wavelet sharpening line the channels up a little bit more contrast and uh, that, that looks good that's about as good as we're gonna get with uh, out of what you know the seeing we had now that's the first image in the sequence now I'm going to go ahead and open up the last image in the sequence and do those same things to it and make sure, you know, just kind of a sanity check. Make sure it looks all right. Yeah, the seeing had improved dramatically by that time in the evening. Um, yeah, looks all right. 
Okay, now what we're gonna do is create an image container and add all of our files for our frames. Now we will set the output directory. I've already got one made here, Jupyter frames. Output directory is Jupyter frames and that's good now we will create a process container and just drop all three of these processes into the process container now we take our image container drop it on the process container and that will do all of that stuff to all of those images. There she goes. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, there we go. Now that should have done all of those steps to all of the images and dropped them in here. There we go, looks good. Okay, now that we have all our frames processed, we will open up Blink. And for this to work, you need to have FFmpeg installed. And I'll show you how to use that in a second. So Jupyter Frames will open up all of our frames in Blink. And it's stretched. We don't want it stretched. OK. And there is what it looks like spinning around. Not too shabby. Okay. <clears throat> now once once we have everything loaded up into Blink, we want to hit this button right here, create movie, and you need to have the location of your FFmpeg executable you don't down, download ffmpeg from the internet it's all over the place it's a pretty pretty regular thing and you put the put your directory for it in in this uh, line right here you got to tell it where ffmpeg is and these are your uh, arguments to FFmpeg and the only ones I ever worry about is the f this will be your file name I'll just call that Jupyter dot AVI and then this number slash R and then the number after it is your frame rate um, let's see what it looks like at 10 frames per second that'll make a five second animation and then uh, we'll delete video frames when we're done with them and I'll just output it to the desktop that's fine so make sure you've got your ffmpeg location um, modify your arguments for your frame rate and file name and then your output directory and then run and it will make you a video I think it's done Okay, here's Jupiter AVI. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. There is our animation of Jupiter spinning. Might even be able to slow it down a little bit more. But all oh, that atmospheric dispersion, everything's stretched out. It, look, it doesn't look that great, but it's not bad. Okay, <clears throat> that's all for now. Clear skies.